Good morning, one and all. Today we're gonna to be bidding and building a tricky landscape and show you how we break it all down. But before we get into that, we gotta let Trucker John vent about some traffic. All right, so we're riding along dirt riding with, with, with the John the Trucker. Yep, and we're doing 65, having fun, and then all of a sudden slammed on the brake. We're just trucking along. We're bringing out oh, uh, the ASV and the new Mini X to uh, Blaine site. And so we're like, oh crap! Don't need to crush anybody hauling a ton of ton of weight. It, so now we're just stuck in traffic, putting along. One stupid trooper with a car pulled over. <laughs> That's what caused all of that. <laughs> That's what caused all that. Yeah, everyone's got to stop and gawk at whatever anybody else is doing on the side of the road. So it wasn't even an accident. It was just a car parked on the side of the road. Yeah. Now I know some of you are gonna throw Trucker John under the bus for saying that, but have you ever sat in traffic for 20, 30 minutes just to, fi just to finally pull up and see that a, a police officer has somebody pulled over on the side of the road? If I'm, I've said this before. If you are a police officer and you've gotta pull somebody over on the side of the road and it's busy traffic, pull them off on an exit ramp if you can. Pull them off someplace not just directly on the road because all it does is create an even bigger traffic jam. busy while well, me and John were running around doing other things, getting all the materials and whatnot for Blaine and whatnot after delivering all the vehicles. But yeah, they got pretty much this wall starts right here. Got all the way down to where it's still intact. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. All the way to here. All right, so what you're gonna look at as we pull apart this retaining wall is the typical scenario that we run into and why we are replacing and repairing so many of them. So you other landscapers, don't stop doing this, but if you're a customer, don't let them do this for you. What you're gonna notice is these are hollow blocks. That means the core is from the bottom only. There's no way of core filling these things. And they have just a little tiny lip on the back of the block. So if this is the block, there's a little lip on the back of the lip. And that little lip is useless. When we actually use these blocks to base, we actually take a, what's called a chip and hammer. It might as well be the back of a pliers. And we just tap that and that knocks the entire back off. So there's no connection method with these blocks at all. So make sure if you are hiring a landscape company, don't allow them to put this in for you guys. They're doing an eight foot radius so that I don't have to do any cuts on the radiuses because eight feet you can make just using A's, which is very, very nice. By going with an eight foot radius, we can have a solid line on the cap units, meaning that the backs of the caps won't split or separate. We want to make sure that those caps are uniformly tight, whether that's as straight in a row or going around a radius or a curve. If it gets tighter than that, well then that means we've got to start to do some custom cutting. So the eight foot is kind of the key measurement to keep us from custom cutting every single cap. Now the easiest way to break down a bid is in phases. You can, we do it but with demolition and excavation as phase one. That's tearing everything apart and prepping for the build. The build itself is phase two, whether that's a retaining wall, a paper patio, 
uh, installing trees or anything that is the new stuff that's going in place. And then phase three is the restoration. So that is putting everything back together with a nice, it's like buying a Christmas present, putting it in a package, wrapping it up, and putting the bow on top of it with your card on the top of it. That's what the restoration does. Puts everything back in order. So let's break this thing down a little further. Now here's where it gets a little bit tricky. On phase one of every job, that's gonna be different. You're never going to have the same retaining wall to rip out, the same slopes to go down, the same amount of dirt to take out. That will always be different. But phase two on a retaining wall build will almost always be the same. Meaning you can create a boilerplate template to help guide you modify your numbers for a specific job. So let's break down exactly how we would do a phase two build uh, bid on a retaining wall build. So here's how you break down a retaining wall bid. It's your basic materials. It's your block, it's your rock, it's delivery of your materials, and it's the installation of your materials. It's those four nice little pieces of the puzzle put together. So just to make life easy, let's say your block price is $10 a square foot. Now you need your rock. And this is where most companies skimp. They think they're saving money. Worst possible thing you can do. Don't freaking skimp on your rock add more rock because it's super duper cheap insurance if you are a landscaping company put in more rock than you need to but if you want to know the exact amount of right rock to put in it's 200 pounds per square foot so let's break this down for you if you have a 100 square foot wall you multiply it by 200 and then you take that number and you divide by 2,000. And the reason you divide by 2,000 is you don't buy your stone on a price per pound, you buy it per ton. So you're figuring out how many pounds you need to put into your wall, and the key factor is 200 pounds per square foot, but you're buying it per ton, so <laughs> divide by 2,000. You've also got to calculate in your travel time. That is the delivery of the materials to your job site. You've seen Trucker John pissed off because he was stuck in traffic. Trucker John was delivering all of our materials. He had all of these guys waiting for him. So uh, the delivery is a vital component. You've got to calculate in your delivery time and then your install. How long is it going to take you to install this? So when you put those four pieces of the puzzle together, it should create a template that will help you go out and bid almost every single retaining wall job you do. But there's nuances to that. In this job, you're gonna see that we're putting in GeoGrid. GeoGrid means we've got extra excavation, we've got extra backfill, we've got extra compaction. So we've gotta to start to take in those small fluctuations into our price. But once we have the generalized guideline on how to bid these things, we can then modify that on a job per job basis. If that doesn't help you out, then I don't know what will. So give me a thumbs up if it does. Or a hell yeah in the comments. Hell yeah, give me a hell yeah. All right, so phase one was the demo and excavation. Phase two is the build. Now phase three is the restoration. Now you can't just leave your customer's yard in a mess all higgledy-piggledy. Well, you can if you tell them ahead of time, but if you haven't done that, then you need to take into consideration the restoration. And that can be seed, it can be sod. In this case, we're doing sod, so let's break down how we actually do that sod job. What we do is we measure the area and divide by nine. Oh, more math, oh my God, yes, you can do it, simple math. It's length times width, 
and then divide by nine. The key is, is you're getting square feet, but you don't buy sod on a price per square foot. Again, you just don't do that. So that divide by nine converts it to square yards. And that's how you can buy your sod. And that's also how you can charge for your sod. That's that, we're all wrapped up. And as an aside to this video, I wholeheartedly support our police officers, our troopers, our military, our doctors, our nurses. My wife is a nurse. My uncle's a state trooper. And the fact that John called him a stupid trooper earlier in the video is just John getting emotional. It happens. Get over it. See you guys on the next one.